So what we have over here is a mini PC. Well, actually calling it a mini PC is a little bit of an understatement. And this guy here actually created itself a whole nother category, which is a mini workstation. This is from Minis Forum and this is the MS01. If you haven't heard about it, well, you should. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method, including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. Now, Minis Forum is one of those companies who actually was kind of nobody's in the mini PC market a few years ago, but now they are one of the biggest players in the mini PC game and they produce all sorts of products now. And this is one of their very, very special model. Mm, that's nice and green. Alexa, background lights green. Power cord, HDMI cable, some screws. Okay, that's an interesting adapter. There's a few things you need to know before actually turning this PC on. The power brick is quite big and it is a 180 watt power brick. 12 volts, 9.47 amperes. Alrighty, this is a pretty cool block of a PC. Front IO, headphone mic combo jack, one USB 3 type A, and then two USB 2.0s type A ports in the front. In the back, Oh, so there's a few things going on. Firstly, another vent that's gonna blow this through. All the airflow will suck in air from the bottom there. Can you see there's a little vent that's going there? I believe that's the CPU vent and then it blows it out from that side. But the back, we have something interesting. So the DC power in nine volts, which you can see over there. Then we have USB 3.02 ports there. They're type A, HDMI port, then two USB 4.0 ports, which also support displays. So you have a few options how to connect your monitor. We've got two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports and then two 10 gigabit ethernet connectors, but these are SFP plus connectors. So a little bit more of a workstation server thing because you usually don't see these SFP plus connectors on your normal mini PC. And the cool thing is, I believe if you press this latch over here, there's a little button there, it should just slide out. There we go. And it opens up just like a drawer. You can see these hinges on the side. And that's a fan underneath that blows heat for... Ooh, that's interesting actually. So the heat underneath cools down actively all of the M.2 SSDs as well as the Ethernet controller. So there's a heating underneath there. Can you see that? That's for these controllers. As you can see, our Wi-Fi antennas are connected to the front there. So even if you have it in a rack situation or something like that, you still have the Wi-Fi antennas in the front, so you get good signal if you needed the Wi-Fi. So firstly, I'm looking at the top part of this PC. The one interesting thing here is this. You've got a full-size PCIe X18 slot, but I'm told, or oh, what I can read, this runs at X8 speed, PCIe Gen 4. I wish this was a 16 slot because you could make this a very interesting NVMe NAS if you had one of those single slot M.2 expansion cards. As you can see, this is never going to fit in here because it is, is too big. But the card doesn't necessarily have to be too big. This wastes a lot of space and I wish they made a card that is just small. So what fits in here is half height single slot cards. So some of these GPUs you can actually fit in, some of the low profile ones, but that's an interesting slot to actually use. If we undo these three screws here, I believe we will have access to our RAM underneath. So this fan will take intake from the top of the case and then blows it out from the back. So this cools the CPU and the RAM as well. So whatever heat comes from the RAM as well, so it will blow it through, which is quite a cool airflow design, actually. Pulls it in and then out from the back. So this here is DDR5, 5600 mega transistors per second sodium from Crucial. And altogether, this is 32 gig. Of course, you can upgrade it yourself to 64 gigabytes if wanted to. Let's check out the bottom side as well. 
So there's another three screws here and that should take our fan off. There we go. So this is a much skinnier fan that you usually see on mini PCs. The one on the other side was a lot more thicker one. So interestingly, this fan also keeps the Wi-Fi antenna attached over there. So if I'm not mistaken, this card will go into here. So this is the included SSD that comes with it. Not exactly sure what brand this is, Big Kingston, but you'd probably put it in here. As you can see, that screw lines up in there, but still a little bit dodgy because this battery is slightly in the way. We'd have to move the battery somewhere else. That's where it would slot in. So these M.2 slots here, they're a little bit interesting. So this one here is a PCI Gen 4 X4 slot. Then this one over here is PCI Gen 3 X4 slot. And then this one over there is PCI Gen 3 X2 slot. But this guy over here also supports the main one where our SSD was plugged in. Also supports U.2 NVMe. So if you do want to plug in this via that little expansion, you are able to do that. But you do have to use this switch here to change it to U.2. So whenever this is U.2 or M.2, make sure that the switch is switched accordingly because you may fry your SSDs because the voltages are different oh by the way all of these m.2s also support the 22110 which means 110 millimeters long ssds so if you want to run one of those intel updates in here that's a perfect one for this this is the heatsink for these uh, 10 gigabit ethernet controllers that are in there and they are like separate ones so you're going to get absolutely solid performance there also these two usb 4 ports support 20 gigabit ethernet over Thunderbolt. So the connectivity for networking here is absolutely insane. Let's put it back together and let's take a look at the performance of this then. Servicing this, as you can see, was pretty easy. Back inside we are. Okay, let me set this up and then see how it actually works. So it took a while to set it up and get all the updates done and everything. But now we are finally set up. Inside this PC is an Intel i9-13900H, which you can see here. Now, don't be alarmed by this because you might not want this powerful CPU in there. There is also a 12900H and an i5-12600H version available, which have exactly the same IO, exactly the same connectivity. So if you don't need the big CPU power, you can save a ton of cash. I'm gonna leave some links in the description below if you wanna check them out. Ooh, that's interesting though. Even though, do you remember our RAM, what we saw there was running 5,600 mega transfers per second. The BIOS is not letting it run 5,600 because it's running 5,200 mega transfers per second. As you can see, 32 gigs there. That's interesting. And we've got a Kingston OM8PGP41014Q SSD. Now that's the one that came with it, but you can get whichever one you want in there. Our Ethernet, which is the 2.5 gig controller there. We've got the XE graphics, but let's take a look. How does it handle cooling and temperatures? So as you can see, our PL1 and PL2 limits have been set to 80 and 61 watts and the turbo boost time window is 40 seconds so let's take a look how is it actually doing it i'm using the 2023 because i believe it uses less power on the i mean more power on 23 than on 24 so let's take a look 40 73 watts so as you can see we are boosting to that 80 watts that's been set there but we're not actually thermally limiting or thermal throttling i don't know why it was before at 83 degrees seems like there is plenty of cooling available for this okay now we're thermally throttling some of the p cores two of the p cores run okay but the rest of them are thermally throttling still pushing 73 something ish watts out there look at that 15,686 points so we could probably get around 16,000 points as well but right now we are thermally limited as well so the 80 watts is pretty much the thermal limit what we can push through there even though our power brick can support more up to 190 watts. The interesting thing is our 10 900K that I'm using in there and rocking, recording the screen on gets just around 16,000 points. One of them, I get 15,427 points or 16,300 points. Now this guy here is pulling many times less. Bear in mind the 10 900K pulls 290 watts, something like that. And this one is so much better. 
Now, I could replace this PC that's that I'm using underneath there. I wish I could somehow plug the 4070 in here as well, but the CPU performance is absolutely insane for this. What I'd like to do is let's remove all power limits and see how much power will it actually push through and see if we are thermally limiting our system or is it actually power limited? Because sometimes you can have a mini PC that says, you know, you can put more power in, but just because of the power delivery and MOSFETs in there, it won't push any more power out. But right now it's completely open. Let's see how much is it pushing through. 93, 100 watts, 97. So as you can see there, it can push a little bit more there. Yes, we are thermally, definitely thermally throttling 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 tries to put 3.8 gigahertz on the p cores and 3 gigahertz on the e cores as you can see in terms of points wise there wasn't that big of a difference because the clock speeds probably did, probably didn't change as much as you can see we're boosting to 4.5 gigahertz in some of the single cores we're going to take the chassis off and leave it open like that now, would you look at that? That is 17,000 points by just removing the cover. So it looks like it's not getting a lot of air through, even though this is pretty good, like ventilation there, but the airflow must be so much better when it's open. And look at that, we got 17,000 points. Now, 17,000 points gets us to the 12,600 desktop CPU range, which is pretty insane, but we're still thermally throttling. So the interesting thing is, if you look at the design, this heatsink, this bit over here is foam. So they're kind of like isolating the CPU heatsink so that it doesn't heat up something else, I guess, around. But let's take another Fantex T30 fan here and let's try this again. So let's see if we can get past 17,000 points I've got this running really fast, this fan speed now. Oh, look at that. Some of the P cores are boosting to 4.2 gigahertz. 3.9, as you can see, they're going down. There we go, we did it. 1700 points. I've taken the included fan off and I'm gonna replace this fan there now. I wanna see if that is gonna do any better See, they didn't do much. The included fan is actually better in this situation. The way it just blows through the blower fan gets air through a little bit better through that heatsink there. I don't think you should really remove the limits and push those limits even more than what we have here. I think what you have there is really, really good. You still get roughly around 10900K performance on such a small form factor PC which is just absolutely insane. The power consumption is gonna be much less than 10900K as well. And it just performs insane. You've got so much network connectivity, it's absolutely insane. Now, can we call this mini workstation? Yes, that's a very interesting bit of it because you can get an NVIDIA RTX A2000 GPU. I'm gonna leave it in the description below if you wanna check it out. And you can add that GPU in there. And then suddenly now you have a very good performance PC that you could use as a server, maybe rendering out some of these projects. However you wanna use this, this is such a unique, awesome device. If you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave it in the description below as well. And if you do upgrade the RAM, don't go over 5,200 megatransfers per second because it, it doesn't support that even though those are 56 it does run them at 52 that's interesting to know anyway if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck create a pc then there's some build guides for, in the description below completely free go follow them and then you can build yourself something absolutely epic and if you want to reach out you can reach out and connect i'll get back to all of my minect messages and i'll see you soon bye bye